Hey everyone, it's Ryder from Skip. I hope you're doing well. Breaking news today on EIDL grants. This is important for you if you are a small business, independent contractor, or sole proprietor. The SBA misspent $4.5 billion on EIDL grants. Basically, people got more money than they should have gotten, and instead, that limited pool of money should have gone to other folks. This report was just released. It's incredible to see. I'm going to talk about what happened with the EIDL grants. That's the $20 billion, $1,000 per employee that went out last spring and summer. And most importantly, the conclusion of this report is for the SBA to remedy this mistake. So that may mean if you missed out on those grants, there may still be an opportunity for you to get this. Stay tuned, I'll keep today's video short. Most importantly, thanks for subscribing and supporting our channel. It's the best way to stay up to date on our daily videos. Like this video to tell YouTube that more people should see this important report. And as of posting this video, we just opened up five more slots for one-on-one -on -one EIDL support. That's personalized support for your EIDL situation related to reconsiderations, the increases that will start to be approved tomorrow if you need help. We shuffled things around, opened up a few more spots. Some of us will try to work over the weekend as well. The link is right in the description. If you use that link, you will skip the waiting list of over 3,000 people. Link right below at the end of this video, I will mention the EIDL loans because we got another email about that today. But I wanna start with EIDL grants. And this report from the Office of Inspector General, man, it is something else because $4.5 billion went to people it should not have. And that could have been prevented with a five minute change. Basically one line of code could have prevented all of that. It just goes to show you, yes, this program was rushed out after the CARES Act was approved. Emergency EIDL grants started to be distributed on March 29th, 2020. There was 20 billion in that pot of money. 1,000 per employee is what the SBA decided. The funds were exhausted just 14 weeks later on July 10th. Here's the background, 5.8 emergency EIDL grants went out, but millions of you missed out and you were waiting for the new bill in December. However, when that December bill passed, you found out about the targeted EIDL grants, AKA you had to show revenue decline and most importantly, live in a low income community to receive a grant up to 10K. So millions of you missed out on these grants. Here is what this report found, highlighted here using SBA's data. We found SBA provided 4.5 billion more in emergency EIDL grants to sole proprietors and independent contractors than they were entitled to receive based on established policy. Second paragraph here, we determined over 500,000 sole proprietors who received a grant of more than 1,000 claimed more than one employee on their COVID EIDL application. Up at the top here, over 160,000 independent contractors, same thing, they received a grant of more than $1,000, even though there was no EIN and they claimed more than one employee. Basic math here, you all remember how this form looked. Again, this form right here has allocated hundreds of billions of dollars in loans and grants, over 20 billion in the EIDL grants. On step two, when you put in your business information, you'd put in your organization type here. You had to choose. If you checked sole prop or independent contractor, then you'd have to put down your TIN either EIN or SSN. Now, now originally last year, they did not have this split out. So I think this is something they did when they realized the mistake that was made on this form. You'd basically put in your EIN or SSN one field here. Now at the bottom of this form, you'd put down your current number of employees. Well, this is where the doozy happened. I'm gonna go into some crazy data that's in this report, including one person claiming they had over a million employees, but they were a sole proprietor and that not setting off any alarm that person got $10,000. Obviously at the end you had to attest everything was true and correct, but this report says, look, the burden should be on the SBA to ensure they're spending taxpayer dollars correctly. So in short, if you put down that you were a sole prop or an IC and you used your social security number, that could have been the first flag. If you use your social, that means you don't have an EIN. That means you can't have employees. Therefore, your maximum amount should be $1,000. And that's basically the report the OIG did. Easy math, pull everyone who used the social and then count how many put they had two or more employees. And that's how they calculated the overspending amount of over $4.5 billion. And here's the OIG recommendation from the summary report. We recommend that the SBA remedy 4.5 billion in funds dispersed in excess of its policy allowance 
to sole props and independent contractors. Very broad, I'll talk about at the end what else they say about that. But remedy, of course, can be interpreted many different ways. Does that mean they're gonna take money back or basically say we're gonna give out 4.5 billion to people who deserve it? To put that into context, that 4.5 billion based on the average EIDL grant amount, which was a little over $2,000, that could help another 2 million people. So 2 million of you watching, if you missed out on EIDL grants, it's because of this mistake and maybe the SBA will say, not only are we going to try to recoup that 4.5 billion, I don't know how they're gonna do that, but maybe they could try. They could also say, we're gonna allocate 4.5 billion for grants to remedy the situation, to get this money out to people who are actually eligible for it. Let me scroll down here and pull out some of the very interesting data. Here's the takeaway. SBA has a responsibility to prevent improper payments through internal controls, particularly through validation of illogical information on applications. SBA relied on applicants' self-certifications of application information and dispersed the grants based solely on the number of employees stated on their applications with no checks or reviews of applications that would have been, quote, flagged if controls had been in place. Like I said, that could be one line of code, literally. If meeting all requirements, if social security number used, approved amount is $1,000. It couldn't be any easier. Of course, it's a lot to think about, but a decision maker at the table could have thought, hold on, how are we gonna make sure people are getting the right amount? And someone at the table must have asked, well, what happens if people put down 10 employees? What can we do? Can we do anything about it? If they asked those two questions, someone would have spoken up and said, oh, actually we could do it this way. Instead of 18 months later, we're seeing a 20 page report about it. And I don't know how much OIG resources went into this report. It could have been resolved in 30 minutes a year and a half ago. And most importantly, helped many of you who are still struggling. So here's how the chart looks. First on sole proprietors, I just wanna start at the $10,000. So there are over 300,000 folks who said they were sole proprietors, therefore they should have zero employees who got the full $10,000 for a total value amount of over $3 billion. That's the biggest impact there. 300,000 folks illegitimately getting the full $10,000. The other buckets are smaller. Nearly 100,000 got 2,000, 41,000 got 3,000, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the big bucket, people putting down 10 or more employees. And you know, part of this could be confusion. We had this question a lot last year. What qualifies as an employee in this case? And many people who had independent contractors or people working under the table may have counted, well, I have my three brothers helping me, etc. cetera. So, so they may claim that that was their misinterpretation, but in my opinion, it's pretty clear. Employee means employee. There shouldn't be much confusion there as to what an employee actually means. Now here's the shocking part. 15 applications claimed over 1 million employees. And if that didn't raise a flag, I don't know what would. 41 claimed 100,000 to 999,000. Over 300 claimed 500 to 100,000. Over 500,000 claimed two to 500 employees. So that's the majority, but 15 businesses out there, having that number be 1 million. I mean, probably it was a typo, but there was no simple form validation to check that. And here's what the report says, basically what I just said. The absence of an EIN and the number of employees cited on these applications should have alerted SBA loan specialists. I mean, a lot of this was automated. There didn't have to be a loan specialist to review this. But anyway, it should have alerted a loan specialist that the application's self-certified information was flawed and likely erroneous. However, SBA never requested additional information from these sole props to verify number of employees. Here's the data with independent contractors which was a less popular category, but still 29 claimed over a million employees, the bulk being two to 500. But man, the fact that 29 businesses out there clearly made a mistake, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and it wasn't caught by the SBA system. And here's the independent contractor look. Again, let's take a look at who got $10,000. 80,000 applicants got $10,000 for a total value amount of $800 million. Now, here's the good stuff on next steps. Let me read these last two paragraphs here. Even though the initial program has concluded, the agency still has options that could potentially result in the recovery of emergency EIDL grant funds that should not have been dispersed. For example, SBA can follow up and request EINs from applicants that claimed more than one employee, right, to basically validate, hey, did you put down the wrong number? Can we correct this after the fact? or they could request proof of the number of employees from applicants who did not provide their EIN. I would venture to guess the majority of those folks who put down the wrong number may not actually have employees, but a certain percentage may be put down the SSN instead of the EIN. Last paragraph here, the agency could also request the return of funds dispersed to applicants who have neither an EIN nor proof 
of the number of employees claimed. In cases of applicants who do not have either an EIN or proof, the agency could refer suspected fraudulent applications to OIG for investigation and potential prosecution as is normally done if wrongdoing is suspected. So basically the final recommendation here from OIG to the SBA is for the SBA to remedy the 3.5 billion dispersed to sole proprietors and the 1 billion dispersed to independent contractors that exceeded the amount allowed by SBA's policy. So that's the big surprise report that just came out. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments. The majority of you watching are familiar with the EIDL grants program. Either you got one or you didn't get one. So this report affects you. We'll see what happens here in terms of remedying the situation, but drop in your comments. I'd love to hear. And finally, tomorrow, Friday, October 8th, the SBA says they will start approving EIDL loan increases of over $500,000. They've already started to review. They've already started to send out denial letters I talked about in yesterday's video. I'll link to that above. But they're also sending out emails to folks who may be eligible for EIDL increases. We've seen a few of these. It looks like this right here in bold. If you're interested in requesting an increase to your COVID-19 idol, please follow the steps below. And it gives eight steps, which is quite confusing to be honest, because we've heard of several people getting these, but there's an SBA portal. So in my mind, the SBA should be telling people to go to their portal to request things. Instead, they're getting an email with eight steps to basically say a written request, disclose any changes, IRS form 4506T, schedule of liabilities, real estate, personal financial statement, ODA form P22, and send one through seven to COVID idle increase requests at sba.gov. It seems like this is the manual route versus the portal. I guess if you don't have access to your portal and you don't receive that request more funds button, this could be a path for you. However, and we found this out last Friday from our SBA contact, if you are still pending an EIDL loan, you cannot request an increase. You have to wait for your pending application to be decisioned, either yay or nay, before requesting an increase. As far as I see it though, there's no blocker in place from anyone going through this document. So both the EIDL grant report and this email with instructions on how to request an EIDL loan increase will link to on our app. Go to HelloSkip in the App Store and Google Play. And if you want personalized support to help with your EIDL loan, very limited number of spots. And we have 3,000 regular folks on the waiting list at the moment. You can skip those 3,000 folks and get a spot either tomorrow or early next week with the link at the top of the description. Most importantly, thanks for tuning in. Stay well, stay healthy, and I'll see you tomorrow.